Through my YouTube journey, I've been experimenting with my background style. I learned a few tricks from trial and error, but I think I learned a lot more from inspirations like Gravity Falls, Hilda, and artists like Anti Dark Heart. We all have different workflows and techniques that might not apply to everyone's style. So for this video, I want to share my own way of making my backgrounds. I have 8 easy steps on how I make my backgrounds. I put the timestamps in the description below if you guys want to skip ahead. But first, what do I use? Right now, I use Procreate on my iPad. But before, I used Photoshop, Paint Sai, or even the animation software itself, Toon Boom. Yes, what you use to make backgrounds will affect your workflow, but not your output. I think you can still create whatever you want using any software. So here we go. Step 1. Deciding on an angle. I always ask myself, what will I like the camera to capture? It can be what the character can see. For example, in this scene, the character looked up, so I made the angle upward. It can also be I want the viewers to focus on two or more characters. Like in this scene, it's the best way to show both of the characters' reaction. And also, if I want one of the characters to be the subject of the scene, I will angle it where it'll show the character more than anything else. As soon as I figured out what angle I want, it's time to execute it with perspective. So that's step two, drawing with perspective. One of the main reasons why I use Procreate is because of its amazing perspective guide. You can use one point or two point perspective, move it wherever, and make all your lines snap to the guide. It's amazing. If it's one point perspective, that means I want the viewers to focus on the character, not the background. I use this all the time since it's easier to animate with this kind of perspective. I usually use two point perspective when the background itself is the subject of the scene to make it not look flat or boring. Or I also use two point perspective if it's zoomed in. So where to put the points you say? I usually put it on the character's eye level and at the center if it's one point perspective. If it's two point perspective, I just put it on each side of the scene. When drawing with perspective, you just have to follow the perspective guides. All the vertical lines should be parallel to each other, all the object surfaces that are facing the camera should have horizontal lines, and all the object surface not facing the camera should follow the perspective guide. Step 3. Details, details, details. I always add a few details to my backgrounds to create a more believable scene. For this scene, this is a storage room. So I added boxes, mattresses, Christmas tree, and stuff you usually see in the storage room. I also add details on the floor, on the walls, tapes on the boxes, crumpled sides, just a few straight lines and some scratches here and there. It'll help the background look more well done. There's nothing wrong with perfectly arranged and clean background, but having a bit of chaos and extra stuff in the background will make the background feel more alive and natural. More often than not, I draw the backgrounds based on what it looked like in real life. Like this, this was really our kitchen growing up. And this was really my apartment at this time. Step 4, line art. This is where you can show your art style. I use any brush that looks like pencil on paper. Also, the thickness of your lines will contribute a lot to your style. For example, Alex's corners backgrounds have thick lines, not tapered and very vector-like. Perfect for her style. For me, I use tapered and textured thin lines. For the line art color, I used black before and it looked good, but recently I started using dark red since it's a bit more subtle than black because you don't want your viewers to focus on your background instead of your characters. Step 5 Coloring. This is also a way to show your art style. In Hilda, they use one palette for everything. For my backgrounds, I always use this kind of yellow, red, blue, and green. They all have this off but a bit reddish vibe to it. So I use colors. Similar to these. Just don't let all the yellows be on one side or use a lot of green on the scene. Or color two things the same color if they are next to each other. For me, it's important to have the red or the yellow of the background pop more than the rest of the color. Next step, shading. This is very important step for me because it adds depth to the background. What I do is I add a new layer, set the layer to multiply, lower down the opacity, and start adding shading using the same brush but thicker with dark red color. Honestly, I am guilty of putting shadows anywhere I want and never cared about the light source, but at least try to be as accurate as you can. Step 7, and the most satisfying step is adding texture. If I feel like my background is boring, too simple, I add another layer, set it to multiply, lower the opacity, use the spray paint brush tool, and use dark red again, and start brushing through the whole artwork. And ta-da! It'll instantly look better. Final step, 
this theft gives life to your artwork. Without it, it's boring, flat, and dark. I just add a few highlights here and there. If I can add a very visible light source like a window or a lamp that is not in the scene, I will, just to add drama to it. And after that, just like with the shading, I change the blending mode of the layer, but this time to either color dodge or add, and set the opacity down to, and I'm done! We're done. I hope you learned something from this video. Go forth and make wonderful backgrounds. I'll be posting a story time animation next, so stay tuned for that. And if you'd like to learn something else, don't be shy to comment down below. And maybe I'll make my next tutorial on my channel about that thing too.